Hey guys, Mitko here from Neon Models. Boat tanks were a popular idea in the late 30s and early 40s. Various designs were developed. From huge balls of steel with 10 meter diameter to small single person operated armored vehicles. None of those were put into mass production nor saw any action. But that cannot keep us from admiring those of course. Miniard did their first what if project with such an odd vehicle. Not only that, but they crowded it with full interior. They picked a tank that was not the biggest ball tank plant, nor the smallest one either. They also packed it in a set that is pretty nice overall, despite the fact that it depicts a vehicle that was never actually put into service. Inside the box, we have an envelope holding the gray plastic spruce, clear parts and decal sheet. This time there is no photo etch sheet included, but the decal sheet is very big instead. Instructions are at the bottom of the box and that is what we are going to start with. Then on, you'll see what Miniart have to offer with this what if packing of theirs. Instruction sheet is standard for this non-standard Miniart release high quality color sheets and nothing less than that in the black and white pages too. Very properly stated at the front cover of the booklet, this is highly detailed model featuring full interior and positionable hatches. Positionable hatches are self-explanatory considering the full interior of the ball tank. Of those above, I can emphasize on highly detailed model especially considering the fact that this is more of a fiction than reality. The color schemes are placed on the color pages which are the first and the last ones of this booklet and after that everything starts with description of the spruce included. Once you get into the built face of this vehicle you'll be amazed how much Miniart tried to include. Somehow they managed to in the end too. There is an engine and ammunition, compartments for the crew, and actually there was no stone left unturned considering the interior of that tank. The assembly procedure will require a lot of proper alignment. Inner construction is made from two parallel ring-like frames, which are interconnected by rods that will need to be strictly perpendicular to the rings. The model is 35th scale and the plastic is very thin, so extra attention will be needed here, plus a lot of patience more than anything else. Also, this kit will require most of the internal parts to be pre-painted and weathered before the final assembly takes place. Once you gather everything, you'll see that the frame is complex and represent a complexity of parts which should be painted and weathered with various techniques. For example, engine should be very oily and greasy, the ammo should be polished and clean, painted with metalizers and the rest is standard tank interior colors and weathering. Three different approaches. The outer parts of this bolt tank will require preparation too. Once closed it will be impossible to paint and weather them and keep the interior intact. So. Pre-planning is a major phase of this build. Once you close them, the form of this tank presents you with another challenge. Weathering a sphere will be closer to weathering a lower part of the boat instead of the regular techniques used in tank modeling. That includes the unusually looking track, the balancing wheels and of course the round hull itself. It will be hard to imagine how exactly the mud and the dirt will spread out around this vehicle, but after all, this is what adds some charm to the whole build. On to the plastic next. We're gonna start with the major parts of the outer hull, which are placed on two different sprues. One of them holds some gears and belts, parts of the engine, or what many art decided would have been the engine used. Actually, those minor parts are what makes this kit really attractive. This is because, as a sphere, it doesn't represent something exquisite from the outside, but considering all the interior, 
the whole idea begins to shape up differently. Great thing is that Miniart left open all four of the hatches of each part of the hull. They are pretty much opening a view to the inside from all the possible angles and makes the interior visible and easily. The hatches of the left and right halves are different in shape and size. On the second sprue holding the other half you can see that major engine components are placed. Probably if you're a scratch building fan you can add various cables and plastic details all over which will put the complexity of the kit at an even higher level. It all comes down to fantasy and research of similar looking engines and similar interiors. Not that tiny and delicate parts are missing here, just the contrary, but there is always room for more in case you attempt to add some. The outer body parts of the tank are pretty big because they are made from a single half parts for each of the halves, but they are molded precisely and the shape is kept which makes it look very good. Again the weathering here won't be an easy job but with proper research and fantasy anything can be achieved. Kit is abundant of repetitive sprues. This is not untypical for Ukrainian model maker but in this case is absolutely mandatory considering the construction. Molding of everything is done with precision no matter what part represents. From fabric parts through flat elements with or without holes on them and up to ammunition everything is nicely molded without much of flash or defects. The elements that represent the round doors part of the whole sphere are looking spot on which sometimes might be an issue for the model makers. Spheres are not that common and especially in that size with scale models. Next thing I will mention, I mention quite often, but for those who haven't seen any of my mini art reviews, mini art nowadays are using very good plastic material. Made in Western Europe, which allows for delicate parts to stay whole without unpleasant cracks or breakage, which was an issue a few years ago. Now even the tiniest and weirdly shaped elements are preserved. Mini Art's strongest side is the complexity of their builds. Engineering is at very high level, but it has a downside as well. It is not suitable for beginners. This kit is somewhat of a mix in between that and the fact that if you miss some of the interior, leave it aside, or all of it, it will be a pretty straightforward build with not much of a hassle. Even if you stay aside from any aftermarket, which won't be much for this kit either, you'll have perfectly good looking vehicle too. A thing that might be very interesting and in the same time unusual are the tracks here. They are represented by four pieces and look like tractor tires or something that reminds of a huge agriculture of vehicles than a normal tank tracks. Weathering here will be something beyond me, but I suspect that it should be very minimalistic to keep the overall look of the vehicle cleanish. With the paint options that Miniart included, that won't be a bad idea, since they are vivid, as you will see shortly. Overall, perfect plastic representation of everything. Might not be the best out there, but it is certain that this one of the very good ones. Decals and clear parts are next. Forovich is missing from this kit, substituted to some extent by the abundant decal sheet. Clear parts represent small lights, which in my personal opinion doesn't deserve that much attention. Tanks are always damaged, covered by mud and dust and please try to remember the last time when you saw the clear parts of an old World War II armored vehicle. Decals are made by Dacograph, Ukrainian company about which I don't know much. However, from the look of the sheet, I can suspect that the quality is decent enough because they look thin and the carrier film is barely visible. 
colors in my opinion are very nice and vivid which with proper and accordingly vivid camouflage paints will make this ball tank shine and in the end you'll have one very attractive and unusually looking vehicle in your collection. Paint options that Mini Art added are many. However, being a what if vehicle, they will never be enough. That is due to the fact that the only limit here is your imagination. Captured German, Japanese or even Allied vehicle is optional. No restrictions about the camouflage or markings either. You can do this camo, splinter camouflage or even insignia in case you want to, for example, Luftwaffe. That is the good side of what if vehicles. You can do pretty much as you please. Besides, such vehicle with winter camouflage or late war camo schemes, especially German ones, will truly shine. I was thinking that captured Korean vehicle might be nice, something from Korean War, but in camouflage that nobody have seen before. Whatever rocks your boat. All in all, sky is the limit here. That last part of the video concerning the paint options is concluding well enough in regards to that kit. It is truly a pleasure to build something without the hassle of going through all the research and its troubles. No proper colors, no accurate camouflage. This is quite freeing and leaves you with the joy of modeling without the pursuit for accuracy in historical matters. With the amounts of parts included, this will be enough for every experienced builder, both in level of complexity and potential for upgrade. As for the painting, I've already made my point. I think this will be a relaxing build and once at the modeling show you will compete in a category which is usually sparse and in the same time very interesting. Perfect for time in between your serious, historically accurate and highly complex builds that takes your energy for a while. This kit here will do the exact opposite. Good job from MiniArt. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked that review. Subscribe, comment and share. Stay tuned for more and I will see you in the next one.